All right, I got another video for you today. And this is something interesting. It actually has to do with the gospel. <clears throat> now, we want to read the gospel. Of course, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. Now, let's quickly read this, and I'll get down to get down to the message for today. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which you also received, and where you stand. By which you are, you are also saved, if you keep in memory of what I preach unto you, unless you have believed in vain. It says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. <laughs> now that's the way of salvation, of course. That's the gospel for today. It's, and Paul is telling us that if we, if we have faith, it says to stand. Stand is another word for faith. We have faith in how Christ died for our sins. How did he die for our sins? He shed his blood. We have to have faith in the blood atonement, as it says in uh, Romans 3.25 through faith in his blood, and many other places. It even says it in uh, Revelation 1, 5. It says he wa you know, washed, us, uh, washed us from our sins in his own blood. Actually, let me, I want to quote that exactly right. Um, it even says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, it says, And from Jesus Christ, who was the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our own sins, in his own blood. That's what it says in, uh, in uh, Revelation 1.5. But we see how it's, we have to have faith in the blood atonement for salvation. We have faith that the blood that Jesus spilled for us, making that blood sacrifice for us. If we have faith, then that blood applies to us. And if we read here in verse 4, it says that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Well, according to the scriptures, it says he did do it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John teaches us. Paul talks all about it. Peter talks about it. How Jesus was the sacrifice. He spilled his blood and actually shed his blood on the cross that day that he died. And for three days, he was, in fact, dead and buried. Jesus Christ himself, being God, rose again from the dead, resurrected. There is no, death has no victory over us if we're saved. There is no death. We die physically in our body. Yes, our, our soul leaves our body when we die. But our soul goes to heaven. And in one day, at the first resurrection, those people that are in heaven will come down into their natural bodies in the grave and come back up having a glorified body. And hopefully I'm one of those that uh, lives to the rapture to where if we, you know, those of us, those of us that live to the pre-tribulation rapture, uh, we'll just disappear and be gone and we'll get our glorified bodies that way. So we have to understand that is what the gospel is. It's what, only what Jesus did. And that's the message for today. It's in vain. Are you trusting in vain? Meaning, are you trusting in something you're doing? Some, if you look back to... Acts chapter 15. And Acts chapter 15 is, is, is a great chapter that teaches us which gospel we're in today, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, under Paul's gospel for today. And it says in here in 15, 1, it says, And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. And of course, Paul uh, mentions here in verse 2, uh, when, therefore, uh, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small uh, dissension, and, dis, and, dispute, excuse me, and disputing with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other, other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the, uh, the apostles and elders about this question. Now they did. If, please, if you get the chance, read um, Acts chapter 15. It just really helps you to rightly divide your Bible really well. And we find out here that they, they did side with Paul because Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles. He was the last apostle, the Bible teaches us. But you see here, they say these certain men came down from Judea, Judea and said, Except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you might not be saved. Now, I'm not saying these men were saying, Don't trust in Jesus. They, he, they may have said that. But the problem is, is they're having you do a work. Have you believe in something you're doing to help your salvation? And that's what the gospel means by, by verse 2 of chapter 15 of uh, 1 Corinthians. It said, by which also you are saved if you keep in memory of what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Vain, vanity, something you did. We have to understand there's nothing we can do for salvation. The only thing we can do is believe, trusting in something someone else did, which happened to be God himself. Now, of course, we run over to uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. It says, For by grace you are saved through faith. Yeah, faith, because the gospel says, where you stand. Stand is another word for faith in this context. It says, For by grace you are saved through faith. It's not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Interesting. The gift of God. You ever work for a gift? No. A gift is given to you. 
It says not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, what is what is works? Well, in this context, works are anything that you trust in for your salvation. You can trust in the blood of Tom and understand how that works, and Jesus died and rose again the third day. You trust in that. But if you trust in also things that you do, like trusting in a water baptism, trusting in, uh, in a prayer you did, trusting in, in a repentance or something like that, that's you doing a work and you would not be saved, as the gospel says. You can only trust solely in what Jesus did for you. We can't be saved from our, our we cannot save ourselves. We cannot work off our sins in hell and in the lake of fire. These can't be worked off. A human being cannot be forgiven for sins like on their own. You know, a person can't do anything and God looked down, looks down from heaven and says, well, they work pretty hard. I'm going to go ahead and forgive them their sins. It's not possible. A human being cannot work off their sins or have sins forgiven by their own will. Only sins can be forgiven through Christ. Only Jesus Christ can sins be forgiven. In the Old Testament, under the law, uh, they would take an animal, a livestock, and they would, you know, shed its blood. And that animal died in their place, and that blood was spilled. For their sins. Now the Bible does teach that it didn't stop this. I mean, it didn't take away the sins. It just stopped it. That means they could go down to paradise or Abraham's bosom when they died. Now, when Jesus crucified, he went down. But then, when he resurrected the third day, it says he took the captives captive. And I truly believe that he took the Old Testament saints up to heaven with him almost two thousand years ago. So there is no Abraham's bosom anymore. There is no paradise. It's just all one big hell now. So. The, the, the blood of the animal stopped the sin, like, you know, like remission. They call it remission. Like when people get cancer, they do chemotherapy, they get re, like remission, <clears throat> and it stops. It doesn't remove it. However, the Bible teaches that the blood of Christ purges, removes the sin, takes it away, washes it clean. So your soul will be washed clean of its sins. So it's what Christ did. We cannot, we cannot wash our own sins away. We can't do it. It's what Jesus did. That's what Jesus come down here for, was to save us from our sins. And how do we do that? Just by faith, believing, trust. Three words that mean the same thing. Now, let's go back to this word gift. And if we go over to Romans chapter 5, we see something very interesting. If we look at Romans 5, well, first let's look at, look at Romans 5, 1. It says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yep, through faith. And it says, now being more, not, not much, much more than being now justified by what? By his blood, the blood of Jesus Christ. We are justified. We shall be saved from wrath through him. What wrath? The wrath of hell. And then how do we get that? How do we receive the blood atonement? Well, verse 11 tells us that. And not only so, but we also joy through God, in God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom uh, we have now received the atonement. How do you receive the atonement? Well, verse 1, through faith. Faith in what? Verse 9, the blood. In verse 11, how do we receive it? By faith. Again, it's through faith. Now, if we scoot down to uh, verse 15 in Romans 5, it says, But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. Free. It says free in the King James Bible. Free gift. For if through the offense one may, one may be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, has abound unto many. In verse 16, and not as it was by that uh, by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift as as many offenses unto justification. Now, we see how it says in 16, it says, and not as it was by one that sinned. Now, who's the one that sinned? Well, Adam. Adam was the first one to sin. Adam and Eve sinned first. And then, you know, took, sin was entered into the world and then into the sinful world. It's a fallen world until, well, until Jesus returns. Jesus will return at Armageddon at the end of the, tribu uh, the, the tribulation, the seven-year tribulation. At the end of that, he'll return on a white horse with many crowns upon his head with roads dipped in blood. And he will separate, separate the sheep from the goats, and he will start his, uh, his uh, thousand-year reign here. And then it will be perfect. But for now, this is a fallen world, a sin world. It's imperfect right now in this world. But we see it's through the gift, this free gift. What's this free gift, is it saying? Well, it's a free gift, gift by grace. What's the grace? The grace is the act that Jesus did for us on the cross. The grace is the act of spilling his blood for our sins. The grace is that he was the propitiation, appeasing the wrath of God for our sins with his own blood. The gift, the free gift is that he died in our place for our sins, and the gift is that he rose again the third day in our, you know, 
and he did all these things, he was judged in our place for our sins. It's already been paid for. You just believe it. Believe that Jesus did it and did it for you, and that's it. Stop. Right there. Don't trust in anything you did or anything you could do or anything you think you're going to do. It's only Jesus Christ. It's only what he did. Let's go over here to, uh, go back in the Old Testament, Isaiah. Isaiah is a fantastic book. So much amazing information on Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 64, and we'll go to verse 6. Isaiah 64, 6, it says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and our righteousness are as filthy rags. And we all do fade as the leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Iniquities is another name for sins. Like our righteousness, our good works are of dirty rags. It's, it means nothing to God. If you do not accept Jesus to be your sole reason, your sole faith of how you're saved, then God don't want you. God's not interested in what you can do for your salvation. Now, God is interested in your service. Once you are saved, then you want to work for the Lord and be pleasing to the Lord and serve. That's what God is very interested in too because if you can please Christ in life, you're going to build up treasures. And more importantly, in my opinion, you'll be pleasing Jesus. And that's what's great. But yes, the Lord is very, very interested with your works for him. And your heart's in the right place. And we, the Lord is very interested in that. But what you're trying to do to try to save yourself or add to salvation, God's not interested. Because if you believe and, and you, you heard the gospel, understand the gospel and believe, but you still trust in something else you did, then you're not saved. That's what the, that's what the gospel says. You're not saved, so you have to be careful. It's solely only what Jesus Christ did. What he did is what it is. What you do for salvation means nothing. Who cares? Who cares what we would do for a salvation? It's, it's, tor it's, it's a wicked thing. So we trust only what Jesus did because if we, could, if we could save ourselves, what did Jesus do this for? You know, He came down here. He had to pay it. Only He, Jesus, who is God, spilled His blood, which is the blood of God, to appease God the Father so our sins could be removed. Now, those that refuse salvation... Are those that will go to hell and they'll have to spend eternity. Well, they'll, they'll be in hell paying for their sins. And they'll come out at the, at the uh, end of the thousand year millennial reign at the uh, great way throne of judgment. And then those people will uh, get judged for their sins and their degree of punishment. And they'll get thrown into the lake of fire for eternity, paying for their sins forever. And uh, the Bible has actually uh, described what this is like. It is the most horribly terrifying thing I've ever heard being in hell and in a lake of fire. You can avoid this. Just get saved now. Trust only in what Jesus did. It's not about what we do. We have to understand it's the free gift. Who works for a gift? A gift is given. Usually people give gifts because they care for each other. They love each other. They want someone to have a gift. You know, and Jesus wanted us to have this free gift, which is salvation. Hope this helped you. And um, if you're not saved, please get saved. We just talked about the gospel, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4. through 4. We have faith in that blood Jesus spilled. Look at one of the greatest verses in the entire Bible. is Romans 3.25. For God has set forth to be a propitiation. A propitiation means, excuse me, propitiation means the act of appeasing wrath. Yeah, the blood of Jesus appeased the wrath of God. It says, uh, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness, righteousness for, the redemption of, uh, yeah, for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. It's through the blood. You have faith that blood Jesus spilled. Because that blood made an atonement, a blood sacrifice for your sins. Once you uh, have faith and trust that Jesus' blood was that blood sacrifice for your sins, then that means that there was a blood sacrifice made for your sins. And the importance of that we have to understand is that Hebrews 9.12 uh, and 9.22 teach us that there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. Almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood is no remission, no forgiveness of sins without blood being shed. You have to have faith in the blood that Jesus spilled, or there is no blood sacrifice made for your sins. You have faith that Jesus spilled his blood and spilled it for you, then there is a blood sacrifice made for your sins. That's the power of faith. And trust that Jesus died for us on the cross that day, and for three days dead and buried. On the third day, he rose again resurrected. He died in your place for your sins. He rose again the third day. I hope this helps, and if there's anybody, a lot of people sometimes get confused about the Bible as far as, you know, the gospel. How do I get saved? You get a lot of people getting frantic. How do I get saved? What do I do? And it's very simple, but, you know, if we explain it correctly through the Bible, it's very simple to understand. I'll talk to you later.